What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this one, I'll be showing you how to mod Hogwarts Legacy. From the start, a completely vanilla version of Hogwarts Legacy to a fully modded version with multiple mods installed, etc. For this, you'll need a couple of tools installed. In the description down below, you'll find links to nexusmods.com. This is a mod distributor and mod website where the community shares different mods for different games. We'll be downloading Vortex, the Nexus Mods mod manager. Head across here and click manual in the top right, then scroll down, look for Vortex and click Manual Download. For this, you'll need .NET 6 installed, so click this to open up a new tab where you'll be downloading the .NET 6.0 desktop runtime. Click the EXE to open it and run, install, yes if prompted for admin and wait for this to finish. Then click close and you can close this tab. Now we can click download over here. This will take us across to another page. All we need to do is log in if you haven't already. Unfortunately, you will need an account for this. After signing in, click slow download and wait for it to download. Click yes if prompted for admin and it will start installing. We'll just wait for it to finish and when it's done, you'll see a new vortex icon on your desktop and the program will start up automatically. Now we'll just wait for it to start. Then when it has, I'll click the icon at the top right that looks like a person, then log in on website, authorize here. Then when you're on the main screen here, click select a game to manage over here. Then we'll search for Hogwarts at the very top, hit enter, and you'll see under unmanaged Hogwarts Legacy. Click manage here, and it says support for this game is provided through an extension. Click download here, wait for the download to complete, and Vortex will restart. Once it's done, Nexus may ask you where the game is located. Click continue, and we'll locate the Hogwarts Legacy file. For me, it's taken me exactly to the right location. See program files 86, Steam, Steam apps, common Hogwarts Legacy. So I'll click select folder, and just like that, it should be happy. On the left hand side, click mods, just under the mods section here, and you'll see a list of installed mods if you have any. Great. We'll minimize this. And now, heading back to Nexus Mods, we're looking for Hogwarts Mod Merger. We'll click manual on the far right once more, download, and slow download. We'll wait for this to finish. We'll open up the zip when we're done downloading, and I'd recommend using a tool like 7-Zip. When it's done, we'll go ahead and make a new folder somewhere. I'll call this one Hogwarts Mod Merger though it doesn't matter what you call it or where you place it, and we'll simply drag all of the files out of the zip into this new folder. Then we can close the zip. Once more, I'll make a new folder on my desktop called Hogwarts Mods. Inside of here, we'll place unzipped mod files. Now, just note that not all mods will need to be merged. Most of them you could install separately without worrying. The issue only really comes when mods use the same pack file or modify the same pack file. We'll get there in just a moment. So mods work in many different ways. This one, for example, the Ascendio 11.0 FPS hotfix. This one you can download manually, but it downloads an installer. We can also manually patch it ourselves. If I click Vortex next to the manual download button, slow download, you'll see that after clicking open Vortex, when prompted, the download is started and it should be added to our game as soon as it's done. Then the Silencio Flu Lady, we can add with Vortex as well, so I'll do so. This one makes the Flu Lady quiet. Instead of saying one of the five one-liners that they do, the DLSS update here will download with Vortex as well. Basically, anything you download with Vortex is usually good enough and should work fine. Every few mods that you download, you should fire up the game to see if things are working happily, just in case. On the Downloads tab here, you can see all of the different mods as they download. Auto skip Aloha Mora minigame. This is a manual download only, so I'll push that to the side. Crystal clear minimap, I can download with Vortex, so I will. Dot reticle, download with Vortex. Slow download. Talent reset potion, this is a manual download. And hey, for the heck of it, let's add unlimited flight height. This sounds like a fun one. I'll slow download this. Okay, now all that's left to do is to wait for these downloads to finish. Now that they're all done downloading, heading across to the mods tab, you'll see all of the installed mods here. We can enable and disable them just by clicking here, which is great. At this point, if we click the play button at the top left to fire up our game, it should launch with mods enabled. There we are back in game. We can already see that the reticle is now just a dot. That's pretty cool. For reference, on my channel here, going to the Merlin trial guide, you should see here that I'm zooming in and here's the big old crosshair, a big circle. Right now, it's just a dot, a lot better. Okay, what about broom flight height? Map, 
weight, and morning. All right, so is the height actually increased? Well, as we're traveling through the clouds, I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. We shouldn't be getting anywhere near this high. This is far too high for any reason. So great, mods are working exactly as we'd have hoped. What next? Well, quitting out of the game, there are mods that we need to install using other techniques that don't have the Nexus Mod Manager as an automatic option. For example, the Talent Reset Potion. I'll download it here and maybe auto Hamora to skip the Aloha Mora minigame. These are all manual downloads. We can't use the Nexus Mod Manager for these. Opening the zips, the Aloha Mora one is just a script file. Z Talon Potion are just packs. So we'll drag all of these into the drop files section of the Nexus Mod Manager and they should all be imported and installed. There we go. At this point, we can fire up the game once more and see if these files have actually started working, which they should have. We'll head across to Hogsmeade Talent Reset Potion. Let's see if that's available. So with the potions shop marked, we'll head over there. Let's see if the Talent Reset Potion is available. Well, zooming in here, yes it is. Talent Reset Potion Recipe. Awesome. So the mod is installed properly and it's appearing alongside other items as if it was intended. That's great. Now for the final kind of mod. If we open the Hogwarts mod merger that we downloaded earlier and the mods folder here, we'll fire up the mod merger. Essentially, you'll be adding mods and changing the order in which they're loaded because these ones all affect the same file and obviously have conflicting changes in most cases. Which ones are these? Well, looking at the Hogwarts mod merger page here, you can see that there are a few mods that are known to have issues and can be merged. For example, the Aloha Mora mod, consistent basic cast and no cooldowns. Looking at these last two here, this one makes the last heavy hitting attack the damage of all of the attacks. I'll manual download here. Note that you shouldn't use Vortex, otherwise they'll clash with each other and not work properly at all. Then the no cooldowns as well will manual download too. You'll also usually see a warning about clashing mod files by scrolling down, such as the incompatibility listed here with Phoenix ship data .sqlite. and here as well, also this time in red, and they say the same file here. So if we open both of these zip files, you'll find .pack files inside of them. We'll drop these into our Hogwarts mod folder. This is where we'll be combining multiple mods into one mod. When you have them all in this folder here, or any empty folder for that matter, we can click add over here for mods to merge, navigate to that folder and add them one by one. There we go. Now we've added both of these. What you can do is add them in a different order just in case they affect the same thing. Then when you're done, preview merged changes and you'll get a list of all of the different merged changes here just in case some of them affect the same item, model, and things like that. Now all we need to do is build merged mod here and it'll open up a new folder in the Hogwarts mod merger folder here called output. This is the pack file we can install with the Nexus mod loader or Nexus mod manager. We'll drag the pack file into here. It'll get installed. I'll click create mod here. Z merged mods dot pack is here and it's telling us it's installed from a different source other than Nexus mods. The next time we fire up the game, it should work properly. So I'll play here. And the easiest way to tell is if we have no cooldowns and of course consistent casts where all of our attacks do different damages. So instead of one heavy hitting attack, they all do the same amount of damage through all four shots. There we go. Let's find ourselves some combat. Running deep into the forest here, we've got some combat here. I'll start just immediately spamming spells and these would usually have some kind of a cooldown, but here there's absolutely none. And our attacks, all four of them do 58 damage, which is great. It's very consistent. So obviously the no cooldown spell is a bit of a crazy one as well. You can just keep spamming and spamming until the end of time, but you get the point. You now know all of the different mod kinds for Hogwarts Legacy, as well as how to install them, manage them, and use them. Obviously very, very overpowered. Anyways, what about uninstalling mods and disabling them? Well, inside of the mod manager, simply click the drop down next to enabled and set it to disabled. By doing so, it'll tell you deployment is necessary 
if the game is currently running, otherwise it'll disable it straight away. If it tells you deployment is necessary, click deploy mods at the very top here and all of your changes will then be made. Now I'll re-enable this. To uninstall something entirely, you can either disable it first, otherwise you can just click uninstalled here and that'll completely remove the mod from your game files. Deploy mods once more if required and there you go, it's now completely removed. I'll be removing the overpowered spamming one here that I created, so uninstalled, deploy mods, confirm, and just like that, everything will be done as we had hoped. On the far right, you can remove mods here entirely, remove, and they'll be removed from your list completely. Great, now you know how to install and use different kinds of Hogwarts Legacy mods. That's about it for this super simple crash course that breaks down everything you need to know about modding in Hogwarts Legacy. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!